fear. We all have it. It hides in our shadows and it stops us often from pursuing the paths we'd like to be on. For me, this month, I've been confronting my fear head on, taking part in the Strada Easel Challenge, an art challenge to paint or draw every day in September from life. And my fear came to play. There's nothing quite like an empty canvas or the blank page to bring you face to face with your fears. And for me this month, that's exactly what I found. With sweaty palms and a racing heart, I approached this first painting and realized it was undeniable that it was fear I was feeling. I'm 52, I've always considered myself an artist. And yet for all these years, over half a century, I've never painted. Fear can stop you. So I decided to share my first week of painting alongside my ponderings about fear, hoping it might help somebody else. How might fear show up and how to overcome it? So my fear has shown up as talk, 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 discussing plans, going to the shops to peruse what I might need for my plans, watching videos and saying, well, should I do this or would it be better to try that? Telling people about my plans, discussing things, telling people that I'm an artist and I do this and I'd like to do that. So much talk. Ryan Holiday says that the only relationship between work and chatter is that one kills the other. And I really felt that. Where was the action? It was time to drop the talk. This was the first thing I realised. My talk was masking my fear of getting started. And if work kills chatter, then it was time to be quiet. And it was time to step into action. So if you're talking about it instead of trying it, it might be fear. So what can you do? Focus on action. This month, I've put every morning just a simple list of eight things in my journal that will move me forward. Eight next steps of simple action. And I've been crossing them off daily. I don't want to break the chain of crossing off my eight must-dos. And it's kept me focused on action, which has indeed killed the chatter. And I'm finding that action is key. Action opens up the gate to the arena and declares that you're ready for the fight. It puts you in the adventure. It puts you onto the path that you'd like to be on, often a path to something new. To be or to do, Ryan Holiday asks. A man is worked upon by what he works on, Frederick Douglass has said, and it's true. Action is the key and talk often is masking fear. The next way I realised that my fear was showing up was through feeling passionate about things. Passion can make you fail because it keeps you in a passion fog, a breathless excitement, which is often devoid of critical thinking or realistic thinking of just what is the next step. It's, it's not very romantic to think just of the next step. It's way more appealing to be passionate with breathless excitement. And that's my personality as well. Um, I often would say to my ex-husband, I know you love me, but do you love me with passion? That step from reality has always been important to me, but I realise that it often can mask fear because it does keep you away from the critical thinking and practical breakdown 
of the simple next step of action. Passion is a way of procrastinating. Who knew? Ryan Holiday says that uh, passion is a force that can blunt our critical cognitive functioning. And in order to combat it, we must replace passion with purpose and realism. And I absolutely love that. He says that purpose is passion with boundaries, which made me laugh out loud when I read it. So fear showing up as passion, as passion fog to detract us from the path of the next step. So drop passion, embrace realism and purpose. This was my next discovery thinking about fear. The next way fear shows up for me is is very similar to passion fog and it's fantasizing and I think if you're creative or really imaginative this is something that is easier to fall into. It's very easy when you are a creative thinker to create a world in our heads that's so padded out and wonderful to wander around that it really does become a place to live in and it will override actual reality. If you are really creative, it really can be a dangerous thing because it's really easy to lose touch with reality. Much easier to fantasise about the painter I will become once I start than to actually get started. Can you see the fear in there? The fear of not living up to the fantasy world that I've created. So let's drop fantasizing, get present, become mindful, stay in the present. It keeps things tangible and real. There's no fantasy to fulfill my desires and secretly make me even more inactive. When I stay real and in the present, there's just the next best step to take. There's just work to be done. There's just lessons to be learned and improvements to make. So drop the fantasizing. And then a biggie, fear showing up as the voices in my head, the inner critic, the super ego, the cloak of shame. I know all of these things well. The voices that say, you can't do this, you're going to fail. Who the hell do you think you are? The memories of my mother holding every artwork I ever made upside down on purpose and saying, yes, darling, it's lovely. The ex-boyfriends that said, well, you just stick things onto stuff. You're not a real artist. They're all, they're all still in there somewhere, being mean and stopping me. The trick here is to recognise when the voice isn't your own, to catch yourself talk. When you realise that most of those voices are not your own, you can say clearly, I'm sorry, but that's not my reality and anybody being mean and saying things to hold you back and to put you off from your goals then that really does say more about their reality than your own. Ryan Holiday says it doesn't degrade you when others treat you poorly it degrades them Hold on to that phrase the next time your inner critic shows up to stop you. And finally, a biggie, perfectionism and procrastination as fear. This turns up as you not wanting to get started, not wanting to taint the perfect idea in your head by not performing it perfectly 100%. Struthless talks about this in his video where he introduces the 70% rule. Don't aim for 100%, aim for 70%. Lower the expectation, lower the bar for entry 
and just get started. When you lower the bar for entry, you won't find yourself needing to tidy the entire house before you try, or I must just vacuum every single one of the kids' bedrooms before I get started. You won't procrastinate so much when you're not asking 100% of yourself before you can even start. I will link Struthless's video down below. It's such a useful watch. So that's it guys, five reasons why fear might stop you. The five ways I discovered my fear showing up in this first week of painting and a selection of ideas to overcome that fear. I hope it's been useful. It's been an amazing first week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.